What's up, y'all? I am Marcus, also known as ENB, and welcome back to From the Dark. Today, we are going to head down into the Demon Ruins using our Black Iron Flame Retad build here. We got the uh, Long Sword plus 14, Pyromancy Flame, which we're about to upgrade the hell out of. Uh, target Shield needs some work, but we're actually not going to be pairing anything. I'm mostly wearing it for looks today canvas talisman so we can throw some miracles in there black iron helm remember i am using a texture mod for the hard leather armor i'll include the link to that in the description that just doesn't affect the stats at all just makes it look black which makes it match the rest of my black iron shit and i can still fast roll thanks to havels and the ring of favor and yeah looks pretty sweet looks pretty sweet what's up Quailana girl it's been a long ass time we're going to be talking about you a little bit today too ah oh, there you are I was expecting you. Let us begin. Hmm. I have a favor to ask. My mother, the Witch of Isolith, was one of the primeval lords. Her power came from the soul that she found near the first flame. She focused this power to light a flame of her own. But she failed to control it. The flame of chaos engulfed mother and my sisters and molded them into deformed creatures. Only I escaped. And now I am here. But my mother and sisters have been in anguish since. I beseech you. Free mother and my sisters from the flame of chaos. I cannot do it myself. I lack the strength and the bravery. But you... I realize what I am asking. But please... Free their poor souls. Mother's ambitions were misguided, no doubt. But surely a thousand years of atonement is enough. Mother and your sisters, huh? We've had this dialogue before, but I mostly wanted it today as a reminder of what we're about here. Mm, I, okay, yeah. I can't, but you, your I mother can't and your sisters. Alright. Next up, we can upgrade our Pyromancy Flame even more let's go ahead and try to max it if we can oh it's gonna be close oh we're not quite gonna be able to do it <sighs> the, i won't stand for this i will not stand for this now go whatever you do do not crack and go hollow lest my time spent on you be wasted i could go kill one of those guys but i think i just got a soul item i can pop here uh, yeah, we, eh, we don't even need one that big and just use one of these. Uh, I missed the soul item last time in Seath. I've missed a couple soul items here or there throughout the game. Uh, we'll be doing a little bit of, like, a catch-all episode before the final one that just kind of picks up some stuff that I've missed that I wanted to talk about. Uh, I'm not focusing on getting absolutely every item, only really the ones that are fairly significant to the story. That is a max rank pyromancy flame right there y'all what else do you have for sale hmm well i guess we'll be back again now go whatever you do do not crack and go hollow lest my time spent on you be wasted all right so, as I not alluded to, as I outright stated a minute ago, we will be talking a bit about Quailana today. And additionally, we will be talking a little bit more about her family. She said her mother and her sisters, but truth is, there's a little bit more to the family than that. We're going to be encountering that, that particular black sheep of the family today. But first, we have some stuff to do with these egg guys. If you remember from earlier in the playthrough, we discovered the Daughter of Chaos Covenant. That's got Ingi guarding the entrance. He is a uh, servant of Chaos. Really, he's a servant of the Fair Lady. And he let us in. He said, hmm, you have no eggs. Bah, no matter. And then he let us go ahead and go on in because we claim to be a new servant for her. I guess his assumption is that we were sent by Quaylog. Now, 
he doesn't really trust us yet, and we're going to try to remedy that today so that we can get a little bit more information from him. But first, we got to get back down to him. Here we go. And we'll talk to him and kind of see where we stand on all of this. This is a very convenient bonfire for doing this next little bit, this next area. You again. There is nothing to say to you except if you lay a hand on the fair lady, you should be prepared to face my wrath. No items to purchase. All right. So there's really not much that he wants he doesn't really want much to do with us at all. But if we head out here into the demon ruins, we might just find a way to change his mind. First of all, we've actually peeked down in here twice before. Once, just up above from Quaylog's bell room, we could see down into here. But also, when we were in the Tomb of the Giants, we could actually peek down and see all this. I can't, I can't, I can never remember if it's from this angle or if it's back over this way. Maybe it's back, maybe it's up there. That we actually peeked in? Nah, it's gotta be higher than that. I'm not sure exactly, but we actually could see in here from the Tomb of the Giants. This bonfire, if you don't have the Daughter or Chaos one, it's fairly important, but what we need today is actually from these gents right here. More of these egg burden fellas. See, Inky doesn't really trust a servant that doesn't have any eggs. Like, it's difficult to say if all of these have their eggs intentionally or not, but Ingi has his intentionally. And this grab attack right here is going to let us get some eggs of our own. Or a egg, rather. Oop, I think that did it. I think that did it. Hold on. Let me get up here and then stand still for a bit. I think we already got infected. Or maybe not. I'm actually not 100% sure of how the mechanics of getting infected work. I'm not sure if it has a little bit of an incubation period, or if it actually does take a few tries, or if there's a hidden status bar that builds up similar to poison and toxic. If so, then we need to get this to happen a couple times in rapid succession. We should be infected one way or the other at this point. Okay, let's try that again. They were cooperating quite a bit with us there too. Sometimes they really don't want to use that move very much, but staying on equal ground with them gives them the best chance to use it. All right, let's wait again. Let's see if we got infected. Yep, we are infected right now. Okay, so I kind of, I postulate, I theorize that this works as if it was a status ailment. That there's a bar that builds up an ailment, not an ailment, <laughs> status ailment. Uh, there's a hidden bar that builds up, and so you need to get hit by it a couple times quickly. It may have an incubation period, I'm not sure. But we're scratching our head when we stand still now, which means it's only a matter of time. Let's just chill here and wait for the fireworks, shall we?
and we are now an egghead. The egghead status is one of those really cool, unique things in this game. Uh, upon first getting egghead like this, one of the main effects is that the amount of souls that you get is reduced. I can't remember if it affects all souls acquired or only from killing enemies. Let's, let's use a large soul here. 8,000. That might be right. I'm not sure. Either way, the, uh, the egghead will absorb a lot of the souls and eventually mature into a, a higher form. But you can't equip a helmet. <laughs> you can't equip a helmet while you've got this on your head, obviously. And it's... <laughs> It's, it's a very unfortunate position to have an egg, and if you look here, he's covered in eggs, but his head is fine, right? We have the item that will let us get rid of this, that will cure this status. We picked one up, oddly enough, we picked one up in the Painted World. Egg Vermifuge removes parasitic egg from body. Bitter Sour Chestnut removes parasitic egg from body. The egg bearers have chosen to serve the Flame of Chaos. There we go. And the eggs symbolize this selfless choice. Naturally, these chestnuts are forbidden, but are allowed under special circumstances. For example, having one grow on your god dang head. Um, so, it's fascinating. The egg vermifuge that we picked up, we actually picked up in the painted world. Um, it's, it's one of those things that's really curious to me because it seems completely out of place, except for the fact that that you do find some foreign pyromancies in the painted world, and on top of that, uh, exiled king Jeremiah, who uses chaos pyromancies, is also there. And he has his head wrapped up, which is really kind of an interesting, fascinating little point. Uh, but you can also get these from the twin-headed snakes in Dark Root Garden. That seems to be the source of egg vermifuge. Like, uh, the, the trees there apparently have these chestnuts. Like, it's a fascinating thing. We can get one from this gentleman. Well, now, you're just like me. Your dedication is fully apparent. Only, well, your head looks awful. Why not try this? I've no use for it any longer. He had an egg vermifuge. He could have gotten rid of his eggs if he had wanted to. But he has no use for it any longer. He's chosen to serve Chaos. Specifically, he's chosen to serve the Fair Lady, but apparently these other guys all serve in Chaos. Oh, hello. What is it that you need? He's a lot friendlier now. A lot friendlier now. Oh, hello. What is it that you need? And he will actually sell us. Some pyromancies that tell his story. We've already picked up uh, the poison mist before, uh, but also there's toxic mist. Why was Ingi driven from the Great Swamp? One only need cast this pyromancy, a perverse diversion from the art of fire, to find out. Yeah, he's learned how to use pyromancies to create poisons and toxins. Uh, and it's also fascinating that we find out there specifically that he was from the Great Swamp. It's not referring to Blight Town, mind you. This is talking about the Great Swamp, the the land from which the Pyromancer base class actually hails, or for that matter, Laurentius. Uh, Laurentius obviously being unfamiliar with Blight Town, he he says he's come to Lordron, you know. So it's its own separate thing. He'll also talk to us about some stuff now. Incidentally, do you have an interest in? If you have, I shall share my flame with you. Actually shares a part of himself, shares his pyromancy flame with us, similar to Laurentius. All the, he is less of a uh, kind of <laughs> chummy guy than Laurentius, I, I would say, driven from the swamp thanks to his creation of poison and toxin have to wonder if he was responsible for the incidents in Blight Town. You have served our fair lady well. Now, let this strength be yours. Worse than undead, we are diseased and unwanted, like the grime of the great swamp. But my dear fair lady, 
She cried for me and swallowed the great blight pus, despite Mistress Quellad's orders to the contrary. A uh, lot right there. She swallowed the... First of all, worse than undead, they're diseased and unwanted. Kind of curious what kind of disease that he had, and was it of his own making? Thanks to the, the toxic mist and poison mist that he produces. But she swallowed the great blight pus. Could that have something to do with her foul condition at this point? Because uh, basically Quelog's sister at this point is very weak and in fact dying. And we'll see confirmation of that with the old witch's ring later. But uh, she's very, very sick. And uh, this covenant is all about giving her humanity to help her get well. Swallowed the Great Blight Puss, contrary to Mistress Quaylog's orders. Quaylog said, no, let that fool, let him die. Worse than like the and he'll sell us these now, as well as this poison mist. And he can modify our pyromancy flame. He'll have some more stuff to say to us soon. For now, let's go ahead and get rid of our egghead status here. I'm curious too. <clears throat> we can re-equip our helmet. And also, I know these aren't weren't the same value souls, but I'm just curious. If this gives 8,000, then that gives 5,000. Actually, it may just be souls from enemies defeated. Because the large solo brave warrior probably should have given about 8,000. So that... Hmm. Intriguing. Alright. Uh, before we go anywhere... We have two firekeeper souls. That I've been hanging on to for a while. And it's, it's killing some people. Out there. That just have to do everything immediately. It's, I know it's been bothering some folks. So I'll go ahead and take care of that now. It's time to go meet the black sheep of the Chaos family. Ceaseless discharge. Ceaseless, um... He's causing a lot of... He's causing... He's caused a lot of people a lot of problems through the years. He's got some... Yeah, I can just scroll down here. Go. Um... He's got some unique attributes it, this is a very unique fight it's got some uh, some weird triggers to it but first I want to point out ceaseless is over here here's the eternal lava flow the the ceaseless in unending discharge that comes from his body is right here and right over here is something very fascinating that we'll talk about later <laughs> I hate doing that to you guys but it's just not time yet I just wanted to point that out just wanted to point that out the actual location there and I'm not sure where that tome of the giants tomb of the giants peak down point set but here we go Through the white light. Fiery pit down below. This is an intriguing boss room. Uh, it's very different from a normal one. There are essentially three kind of primary ways of being able to kill Ceaseless Discharge. We can actually aggro these guys from up here. It won't do us or them any good. But we can aggro these bull demons from up here. Uh, but there are basically three ways to fight this boss. And a lot of people have felt like two of them were exploits for a long time. But in, in fact, all three are intended. But really cool. You can see where that bell tower was before. Hmm. Quaylog's bell tower. Koilag's domain. Hey, 
And as we come around here, oh yes. See we aggroed one of those Taurus demons down there. Too bad that they don't take damage from that lava. Be some free souls every time we walk in the area. Alright, here's his ceaseless discharge. Uh, his lore is very straightforward at this point, but uh, back when I was making the first lore videos, nobody had really figured him out yet. If you actually... Just look at his face. He looks so sad and in such pain. And it's a very fascinating boss in the fact that he's non-hostile to you when you first come in here. If you attack him, he'll attack you back. Uh, and if you die, then when you come back, he'll not be hostile again. The only way to make him permanently hostile is to grab that item over there. At which point he will no longer show you any mercy ever and forever. But once you trigger to fight him, you can just fight him out here and like dodge his big tentacle slams and then counter his attacks. Uh, the way that I found to fight him so long ago now was actually in this little area right here the first time I beat ceaseless discharge I managed to bait him to this area and he would do his little tentacle slam down and this little pathway is just happens to be shaped just like his tentacle and it, if you stand here, it normally won't hit you. Sometimes it will clip it won't hit you, but you stand here, it normally won't hit you. It'll slam down right in here, and you can get a couple of hits on his tentacle, and then bait the slam down again, and then roll away. Uh, so that's two ways of beating Ceaseless. Uh, the fight a mano y mano out in the middle of the open is the only way that some people feel is legitimate. In fact, all three ways are legitimate ways of beating Ceaseless. And I'll show you the third, or I'll try to show you the third. The trigger for it, um, it, it messes with people. I'll put it like that. It's not the easiest special kill to trigger, you know. First, let's get a look at him. Just a standard fire giant. No, no, no lore. Nothing to see here. Is what a lot of people, including myself, felt like the first time we saw him. Although he is very visually distinct, despite being just a quote-unquote just a fire giant. One thing to note is that his left arm right here is all bound up on his body. That's important, so please remember it. Here we find a female corpse in a special location, and when we pillage this corpse... He is not happy about that. Fire splash. Alright, let's try to get out of here. He's gonna slam. Alright, now you can just hit his arm. Well, not here, I'm not going to. You can just hit his arm and try to fight him like that, like I was saying before. Now we got him to pull his arm out. If you don't get him to pull his arm out, he will spam this move on you indefinitely, pissing you the fuck off. But we did manage to get his arm out. You gonna do it again? Damn. Ugh. Such a stupid boss. <laughs> In some ways, mechanically, he's very annoying. He's gonna do it again. Ow. It's too slow to roll. Holy crap. I'm trying to bait him to come around here. I think I got his arm out. He's acting like I didn't. And even if you roll it, you're still going to get hit in a lot of cases. Hey. Is your arm out, truly? There it is. There it is. Okay. Now. Now, if we run, he should give chase. Instead of just spamming us endlessly with his long-range fire attacks, which he will do if you don't get him to pull his arm out. 
And it's one of those reasons why some people were able to get this quick kill or easy kill the first time they ever fought him and others struggle to ever get it. <sighs> See, because sometimes he'll just do this. And I hope he doesn't continue doing that. Or we're in tr Oh, fuck. We're screwed. He's not going to do it. Oh, okay. Here he comes. All right. He's dead. There is nothing he can do. You might not believe me on this, but this is totally a mercy killing. One. Two. Three. Four. His body was ceaselessly, which means unendingly, discharging lava, and now that he's dead, some of it's cooled. Some of it remains, but some of the lava has cooled. Uh, that's probably the most infuriating, like, scripted boss kill in the game, just because, like I said, if you don't get him to pull that arm out uh, and tr begin trying to melee you, if you don't trigger that part of his script to chase you, then he will just stand there and shoot fire at you all day and uh it's caused a lot of confusion through the through the years because you new players are like how do i kill this guy and then some some old hat player who managed to get him to to do the quick kill his first time ever playing the game and just kind of assumes that it's easy it's like oh all you have to do is run to the, the gate and it'll be an easy kill and then the new player tries that, and they're like, he's just spamming fire attacks at me. And then the guy's like, oh, you must be doing something wrong. You are doing something wrong, but it's not your fault. You you actually do have to trigger his melees like that. Like, he has to start using his kind of, his, his club arm there, if you will. Uh, and then you can run to the gate. I hate Ceaseless. I hate Ceaseless. And for that matter, my kill... Of baiting his tentacles also relies on him not using the fire attack. So the only the only kind of straight way of fighting him is just out in the open. And then it's still very irritating if he's using his fire attack because it's very difficult to dodge. You can actually dodge it. I didn't I wasn't really successful with it there. But once you start baiting him to swing his arm out, then you can start outranging it a little bit and then counterattacking. So there are there are several ways to defeat this boss. We just picked up some very very lore significant equipment. The gold hem black cloak cloak cloak. The gold hem black cloak. Fuck. Worn by the witch Quelana of Isolith, mother of pyromancy and daughter of chaos, she wore this gold hem black cloak. Bef Coke. She wore this gold hem black cloak before even the Age of Fire, and it offers strong resistance versus fire, poison, and other perils. Okay. Lots of stuff right here. We, we've we met Quailana. Okay, we have met Quailana of Isolith. She still wears this. So, it really begs the question... Is this actually hers? Is this actually her corpse? Um, for many years, I've been of the opinion that it's probably a mistake in the game. Like, just a, a uh, item description that didn't get updated as things change during development or something along those lines. Uh, however, Koilana herself does give us a little bit of a hint when we first encounter her. She says, oh, you... A mirror undead, yet you can see me fascinating. I'm not often revealed to walkers of flesh. Not often revealed to walkers of flesh. 
Like, maybe she's revealed to walkers of another nature, such as spirits. We do know that spirits in the, the world of Dark Souls can hang, up, hang about after death. Uh, we have the ghosts in New Londo that prove it. On, on top of that, we have the uh, Black Knights and Silver Knights, uh, who, well, specifically the Black Knights, arguably the Silver Knights. I would say the Silver Knights too, but uh, definitely the Black Knights are essentially wandering spirits inhabiting suits of armor. So, this can happen. Uh, if Quailana is in fact dead, if this is her corpse and she is a spirit, then she is the most articulate spirit that we've encountered. Uh, another possibility is that we are actually talking to her through time. But this doesn't really add up for me because it seems, it seems at least, I don't know, it, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. She's not a summon, right? We're not summoning her. So I, I don't, I don't really go for that explanation myself um because she's just already there we don't actually have to summon her through time or what have you it's possible that this this corpse is quailana's corpse and that she's long been dead and that the the quote-unquote mother of pyromancy is uh actually kind of a phantasm or a spirit lingering about in this world and handing down this uh these fire techniques to humans specifically solomon I will also say that this straight up says she's the mother of pyromancy and daughter of chaos. Uh, whereas before we saw that um, the Witch of Isleth was the godmother of pyromancy. See, the Witch of Isleth didn't really actually use pyromancy so much as she used uh, fire sorceries originally. And that, was, that goes for all the witches. And that's something that we'll get into uh, as we progress. But one more point I want to make about this is that she wore this gold hem black hood before even the age of fire. Now, there's a couple of ways to look at this. You could say, well, this is kind of showing us that the age of fire, uh, it officially began after, after they killed the dragons. Like, after Gwen and the witches and uh, Nito, after they fucked everything up that was already here, killed off some arch trees, killed off some dragons, cleared a little space of their own. You could say that's when the Age of Fire began. If it is to be interpreted that the Age of Fire began from when fire came into being, the first flame, uh, then that's confirmation that the, the witches at least and possibly probably Gwen and his lot were around before that so it's just some fascinating stuff you know oh hello what is it that you need below us lies the ruins of the legendary city of Isolith there the molten giant watches over the flame of chaos. Our fair lady and Mistress Quaylark fled from the ruins. I do not know the details, and I do not ask. Well, I think... And that's very fascinating. I... Why did they flee from the ruins? They weren't. F they probably weren't fleeing from ceaseless discharge. He's not hostile to to even us, and we're not part of his family. Uh, he doesn't seem hostile to demons. He, he doesn't seem hostile at all. Like, why would they flee? Probably not because of ceaseless. Worse than undead, like the demons. There's still some more lore for us to get with him. There's still more. Also fascinating that most of these guys aren't hostile, obviously, unless you hit them. Whereas just a few of them down here are. It's kind of it's kind of tricky to be honest, because you get used to them not being hostile, and then suddenly these guys are. And it's a it's that's one way to get eggheaded for sure. Alright, now we're moving down here. This giant dome right there. Alright, 
there's Taurus demons over here and items in this lava. I mean, I guess we're technically underground, so <laughs> maybe you'd call it magma, but it's exposed to open air, so I'm just calling it lava. I don't know what, which, whether the technical... <laughs> Like, if you're underground, but it's exposed to open air, is it lava or magma? One of you geologists tell me. We see over here a Capra demon. And a pathway. We'll be back to deal with all these Taurus demons later. There's no point really in us doing it now. We could get the items, but we can get them easier later, so that's what we'll do. Little breadcrumb trail there soul of a proud knight these guys are in trouble we're not as we once were capra we're not enclosed in a little area with you and your two dogs a low-level newbie at this point now this area features an NPC invasion. Let me try to go just far enough to trigger it. I didn't. I'm trying to show you the fog gate that pops up when you do. Okay, that should do it. There's the fog gate. Oh, I already was having collision detection with Kirk before before the spawn finished. That was fascinating. This is the infamous Dark Wraith Kirk's second appearance. We got a barbed straight sword out of it. The choice weapon of the infamous Dark Wraith Kirk, also known as the Knight of Thorns for the gnarly spikes on his favorite weapon. This frightful sword deals only thrust attacks and causes heavy bleeding. It does not deal only thrust attacks according to the attack type, which says regular and thrust. I would actually have to test it. It probably does not deal only thrust attacks, um, but it does cause bleeding. Something to note, uh, if you're doing the Knight of Thorns kind of side quest, the three invasions, you have to have placed the Lord Vessel before Kirk will invade at this location. This is something that I did not know about when I made the uh, the special armors video explaining how to get the Armor of Thorns. But you do actually have to have placed the Lord Vessel to get Kirk to invade here, apparently. It's not, it was something I wasn't aware of. But if you come here earlier in the game, Kirk just won't show up. Once again... We're going to talk about it later. <laughs> From one perspective, it's very intimidating seeing all of these Capra demons, but honestly, an army of dogs would be more intimidating. They don't have a lot of HP. Oh shit, I dodged too early. It's kind of satisfying to kill these guys. Uh, from one hand, from on, on one hand, I've often criticized this kind of being a little bit lazy, lazy game design from, or not game design rather, but lazy production from one perspective because they just kind of copy pasta this former boss enemy over and over and over. They did it with the Taurus demons down below, they do it with the Capra demons up here. Uh, now I can kind of appreciate just letting the player feel powerful. Like, hey, you remember you remember when these guys gave you so much trouble earlier in the game? Well, knock yourself out. Oops, too early. I got Estus for days, bro. Hi. Ah, oh, really wanted that.
Oh yes. Oh yes. And looking from here. See an item over that way. And a peek down into the demon ruins. Taurus demons abound. Taurus and Capra, Capra, Capras. These are going to be the primary enemies of Izalith right here. These little flame-breathing assholes. They're very easy enemies. Can't quite kill it in 1R1. I can kill it in 1R2, I'm almost certain. 300 free souls as far as I'm concerned. They're just really not that dangerous. Totally setting myself up for <laughs> for death there, aren't I? Oh, man. Man, I wish we could just kick your ass off right now. <laughs> Save a lot of trouble. We're not going to come down here today. Because uh, we're already running long on this episode. Instead, we'll just step over to the side here. He already busted out. He was actually... I accidentally triggered him from above. Hey. Get wrecked. Self. Pride before fall. Come on. Great. Well, that was easy enough. After defeating that, you get access to this bonfire. Very convenient bonfire it is, too. We level up at this point? Nah, we stuck. We stuck. <laughs> and we're gonna wrap this episode up right here, and we'll continue with these ruins fairly soon. That dang this thing. Guys, I'm Marcus, also known as EMB. Catch you on the next From the Dark.